Food Heals Podcast, episode 18. Maybe you love Smurfs. Like, <laughs> literally, like, post a picture of a Smurf every day. You know? You're I mean? going to get Smurf followers. <laughs> we guarantee you. Papa Smurf may start following you soon. <laughs> Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you've experienced any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately. Welcome to the Food Heals Podcast. I'm Allison Melody. Susie Hardy will be back with us next Saturday, but today we have a return guest, You know him from episode two of this podcast. He is known online as the healthy vegan guy, Vince Leah. You heard his story of transitioning to a vegan plant-based diet in order to help heal his ulcerative colitis. And now he's a blogger and YouTuber who posts his healthy plant-based recipes online to help you get healthy. The theme of our show today is do what you love, and Vince and I want to inspire you to give yourself permission to add more things into your life that make you happy. Whether this just means making more time for yourself or your family, taking up a new hobby, or taking a current hobby and making it your career so that you are doing what you love every single day, we are here to encourage you. As you know, we always stress the importance of the food you eat and the nutrition that you are putting into your body on the show, but your happiness also determines your health. And so as you are evolving into a more conscious and healthy human being, you can be working on ways to fulfill yourself emotionally, mentally, and spiritually as well. Food Heals Nation, I'm personally feeling very inspired. I just got back from an amazing weekend in New York at the Hay House Writers Conference. Hay House was founded in 1984 by Louise Hay as a way to self-publish her first two books, Heal Your Body and You Can Heal Your Life. Both of these became international bestsellers, and You Can Heal Your Life has sold more than 35 million copies worldwide. I personally love this book. I gave it to my mom, and we read it together um, when she was sick. I definitely attribute a lot of my personal healing to that book, and to this day, I still read it over and over. It's a great resource. So the conference was full of transformational speakers, including Nick Ortner, Reed Tracy, and one of my personal favorite authors, Gabrielle Bernstein. So at the end of today's show, I will share my top three takeaways from the conference, and they can help you even if you're not a writer. It was really about learning to live an inspired life while doing what you're passionate about. That's why I thought it would be perfect to end today's show with. It's just in perfect alignment with the theme. And, you know, I did the interview with Vince before I went to the writer's conference, so it's interesting that all of this is really coming together for me, and so I would love to share that with you because I know a lot of you want to know how to do this work, whether it's spirituality, whether it's turning your passion into your career, whether it's adding more love, more happiness, and more joy into your life. Today's sponsor is 100% Pure Cosmetics. There are so many amazing organic, cruelty-free products to choose from at 100% Pure. Makeup, skincare, hair care, even baby products. Later in the show, I'll tell you about my favorite product for banishing under-eye circles, and this really works, and a discount code exclusive to Food Heals Nation so that you can receive 25% off anything you order from 100% Pure. So stay tuned for that. Next up, Vince Lee and I will discuss how to do what you love every day. Every day, people. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. Today, I have a special guest slash co-host. His mission is to educate and inspire others about the benefits of eating a plant-based diet and living a healthy vegan lifestyle. From HealthyVeganGuy.com, we have Vince Lea. Hey, Allison. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> you know, there's something funny about your last name. It's like so beautiful that whenever Susie and I say it, we all always sing it. So we're like, Vince Lea. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Cool. I feel like I'm being serenaded here. I know. Well, Susie is unfortunately not here today, but I was listening to the other episode, and every time we would say it, we would sing it. And I just sang it now. I didn't even mean to. That was so cool. I'm going to have to like get some recordings of my last name from you guys or something. Oh, yeah. We'll do a shout out. You can put it in your videos. La, 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 la. La, 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 la,
I wanted like a custom intro, so I may I may have to ex- hire you guys or something. Me and Susie are really good singers, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's good. something I didn't know about you guys. Mm-hmm. You're about to find out. We can harmonize like the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. We're gonna make some songs about food. It's gonna be like top five vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm dying. I am dying. So today we're going to talk about how to turn your passion into your brand, which is something that Vince and I have both done and we're both working on, you know, so it's in progress. You know, we've done a lot and it's fun. It's fun to take something that you love and you're passionate about. For us, it's obviously food. (laughs) You guys know us. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. (laughs) But it's a lot more than that, right? Like food is the basis of health, but it's really about like health, mind, body, and spirit and living the best, healthiest, holistic life you can. Exactly. It encompasses so much. It's, It's a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, it's not just the food. I think food is the easiest because everybody eats. It's the biggest attraction to especially veganism. Yeah. But then you just find out about the whole lifestyle and yeah. the environment. And it's just it's just an awesome feeling. And it's, it is awesome to be able to take something that you love, that you're passionate about and create content about it and mm-hmm. share it with others. You're, it's And it's not sharing to the point where you're like shoving it in people's face. But you're, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm creating. This is how I've turned my life around. And it's out there for people to see. Yeah. And there's people that are going to say like, oh, that doesn't resonate with me. But there's so many people that are going to go, oh, my God, look what he's doing. <laughs> look, Maybe I can do this, too. Maybe I can change my life. You well, that's, I mean, it's, it's not hard. It, are you really as, as long as it's something you want to do. Yeah. I think you can find a way to do it. Absolutely. You know? And that's what I tell you. Start easy. Like, yeah. you know, don't go freaking all crazy. and be like, I'm vegan. All of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, you woke up and now you're vegan. Yeah. You know, just take it easy because that way you're not going to, you know, go off the wagon or, or binge and do something you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Just baby steps like any, anything else, you know, moderation. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So Food Heals Nation, the question for today is, do you wake up every day doing what you love or dreading what you do? You know, ask yourself that. At the Food Heals podcast, we believe that living your passion is a key component to good health. If we're not happy, then we're not healthy. You know, if you're stressed out, you're working long hours, stuck in traffic, and then you have no outlet, no joy in your day. What is the point? Exactly. I was stuck in traffic just getting here, but actually, (laughs) you know, it's funny you said that, LA traffic. But once I got here and I arrived, it was like, it was so nice. I felt like, okay, now I'm doing what I want to be doing. Yeah. Now I'm just going to be relaxing, chilling with my friend Allison, (laughs) talking about food, you know, and it's just like, okay, it was worth dealing with that little bit of suffering to be able to get to a place that you want to be at. Yeah, because you're going to somewhere that you want to be to do something that you want to do, not going home or going to work and dreading wherever you're going. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. It's like once you arrive, it's like, oh, finally, I got here. Yay. Well, I'm glad that you're glad to be here. And, you know, we've all suffered from this where we're doing these responsibilities or these things that we've committed ourselves to that we don't want to be doing, but we feel that we have to, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's for money or for family or something. And of course, we understand that there are things that we have to do. But in general, every day, if you're doing something that you don't want to do, (laughs) it's time to make a change. (laughs) Exactly. And when you're when you find that that passion, it's not work. You exactly. find that it's it's so easy to do. And then finding a way to make money on that, it's like it's like marrying two things together. Absolutely. You know, and you wake up every morning with the with the with a zest for life and you know you're gonna be, you know, influencing people, sharing your ideas and somebody you affect you affect one person out there. Mm-hmm. One person hears your story and goes to my website or goes to your website or finds out, watches one of our YouTube videos and says, Wow, I can do that. Yeah. You know, that that that's that's it like it's awesome absolutely and your passion if you're listening doesn't have to be for food it could be anything maybe you said i want to take this painting class and i'm going to take it next month and you just haven't done it yet or i'll write my novel in a few years and you just haven't gotten to it or you'll you'll write your novel when you have more time the time is now (laughs) there's never going to be more time (laughs) you're never going to be able to do it later do it now start today So just ask yourself, are you doing things on a daily basis that bring you joy? If not, then let's let's change something. I feel like I'm listening to Gary Vee right here, Allison. You're (laughs) you're, you're channeling all that emotion and that passion. It's great. (laughs) I feel so passionately about this topic and I talk to my friends about it and I have so many people that want to change and they just don't know how. So I just feel like this information is so 
important and I'm not the expert on how to change, but I've done it and I interview people that have done it and you've done it. And I just believe that everyone has it, the capabilities inside of themselves to live a joyful, healthy life. And you got to do what you love or what's the point? You're going to exactly. be miserable. And really all you have to do is you just have to start. Like yes. I remember when I when I first created, like it literally started with, hmm, I just like making food, so I'm gonna start taking pictures of it, and then I was literally like posting them on like my personal Facebook page, probably annoying all my friends when I did that, <laughs> and then I was like, hmm, maybe I should start this Instagram account thing, so I started posting pictures on Instagram. So I'm like, I need a name, hmm, and one of the big things that annoyed me, or not annoyed me, but sometimes people are vegan, but it's like. Even if you're vegan or you're not vegan, you still want to be healthy and you still want to try to make the conscious, the the right decisions. And it seems like some people just, even if they're vegan, they're like, okay, I could just have Oreos and chips and, and eat a lot of junk food, but you, you still want to be healthy. Granted, you're helping the animals. You're doing a lot for the environment. There's all these pluses, but why not take care of your body at the same time? Yeah. So I was like, okay, well let's be healthy vegan guy. So I just kind of created that name and that just kind of started the wheels rolling. Then I was like, oh, I wonder if the domain's taken. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me buy that domain real quick. You know, and then, oh, I should do a Facebook page. You know, and then everything just started exploding. Then it's like, YouTube. Hmm, Yeah. I could do a video. You know, and then then once that ball started rolling, there was was no turning back. That's so exciting. (laughs) So how did your life change when you started doing that? Did you just start getting, were you happier to wake up every day because you had this new, like, excitement, this new goal? Definitely. Like I felt like what I was doing, like I could help others. Yeah. And I think that that's mainly why I created the brand. And I, I want to share, you know, my videos. If you go to the YouTube channel, you'll see like recipes that I did. I did a smoothie week recently where I did five like back to school smoothie recipes. Um, if I go visit a restaurant, I'll try to do a YouTube video or I'll, I'll just do a quick, quick little vlog. I'll take out the camera and just share people like what I do on a daily basis. You could see it in my Snapchats too. If I go to a restaurant or I'm with someone, you know, I'll, I'll snap what I'm doing. And I, and I think one thing to remember too is, you know, people seem to go overboard as well. And you can go overboard with, with the healthy thing as well, because mm-hmm. if you don't allow yourself to have that sweet treat every now and then, yeah, you know, then it's like, ah. <laughs> yeah, I remember one time I was at a restaurant and I ordered like a dessert and it was like this brownie, you know, vegan ice cream thing. Mm-hmm. And somebody's like, well, that's not healthy. And I was like, well, OK, maybe it's not healthy, but I'm going to enjoy this every now and then. Yeah. You know, you can't deprive yourself of that either. And I think that's so important as well. It's I just completely. Having a good balance. I couldn't agree more because it's like restriction is not what we're preaching when we're <laughs> when we're trying to tell everyone eat healthier but we're not saying like but don't give yourself the day off don't have dessert once in a while like i still eat cake please <laughs> <laughs> it's like healthy vegan guy most of the time you know <laughs> yeah but you're also gonna say like okay instead of having this really high sugar high dairy dessert i'm gonna have this really uh, healthy version that's vegan and doesn't have all the chemicals and the processed food whatever in it exactly so that's giving someone a healthier option so that's awesome yeah and, and, and you, i think your body will listen to you. like my body will tell me it's like you need to go get a green juice mm-hmm. like you need to chill for a little bit and so you listen to it and then i'll just usually for a couple of days i'll eat a lot of salads a lot yeah. of kale a lot of green juice so i'll get my body like you know back on the right system get all the alkaline going on you know get that headed on the right track again so so i do want to say one thing really quick if you're listening to this and you haven't listened to episode number two where vince shares his whole story of how he got to where he is today i would love for you guys to go back and listen to that because he basically tells a story of you know suffering from ulcerative colitis completely changing his diet to a plant-based vegan diet and he's thriving today right is that a good way to put it yeah yeah i'll take it (laughs) (laughs) so go back and check out that episode so you can hear what vince really did so if you've done something in your life you've made this big change and all you want to do is share it with others look at vince as a model of someone who has done that so for example now he makes these amazing youtube videos because he's sharing all his great recipes with the world (laughs) because he wants to help others and say look i did this you can do this too right exactly and it's cool actually to go like and i've done this because when you first do your first youtube videos it's kind of like oh my gosh like i've never been in front of a camera like uh-huh. you're standing there going you feel like vanna white and this is a smoothie you know <laughs> da, 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 you know and you're turning it and all that yeah and also i'm like man i i 
I'm like, I remember my first few videos. I'm like, do I really want to do YouTube? Like, this feels so awkward. Like, I'm yeah. talking to a camera yeah. or I'm talking to a phone. Like, I had never done anything like that before. So I just went and I'll go on to like popular YouTubers and I'll go back to like their oldest videos. <laughs> I'm like, all right, where did you start? Because I want something to compare myself against. And then it's cool just to see like the natural progression yeah. of now it's like, it's not a big deal to talk in front of a camera and not sound so like presentery and just to be authentic and have fun and yeah. it's it's great i we did i did a video at the vegan beer fest here a few years um a few months ago oh yeah and i'd run into somebody and i'd literally just take out my phone and do a quick video tip That's a awesome. video clip of what they're eating what i'm eating where i'm at and it was so much fun that's just great. to catch everybody in that that natural flow of of the event and what's going on and what they're eating and their emotions and you know, it's just kind of that and to be able to capture that and to see how it's progressed. You know, that's something that anybody could do. Absolutely. And I know a lot of people, they think video. It's like, oh, I can't. I don't want to do a video. You know, and it's very awkward in the beginning, but it was very awkward for me, too. And I only I haven't I've only been doing it for a few months now. Yeah. So it's just it's once you do it there, you'll you'll be amazed how fast things change. Yeah, and like you said, a lot of people might be thinking, well, I can't do it. You can. Here's why. Because we have iPhones now. <laughs> we have cell phones that will take video. There's no excuse. <laughs> There's no excuse. And I understand being scared to be on camera, having the imposter sy syndrome, thinking you're not good enough, you're not funny enough, you don't look good enough, whatever. We've all dealt with that. That's just something you get over with practice, <laughs> right, Vince? Exactly. Exactly. Once, once you start doing it, you realize that, it's better just to be authentic, be here, be yourself, be who you are. And that's what people want to hear. Yeah. Like, that's what people want to see, what I do on my daily basis, where I'm going, um, what I eat. And it's not even what I eat. And that's what I love, like, with other social media, like Snapchat. Because Snapchat actually kind of gives you, like, a behind-the-scenes look mm -hmm. of somebody's life. Yeah. Above and beyond, like, the food or the Instagram or the Facebook. It's this is kind of what I do on a daily basis. And these are my dogs. And this is my dog, like, just crashing on the bed, snoring. Like, I literally Snapchat my dog was just, like, on the bed snoring <laughs> like crazy. So I was like, this is perfect. I love yeah. your dog videos. And you take them for walks, too. And I watch those. And I have I tell my dogs to watch your dog videos. It's so fun. Well, that's because we're, we I have one dog. It's a beagle. Mm -hmm. And his name is Sharky. Mm -hmm. And he needs to lose a little weight. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have two dogs, a beagle and a husky and the beagle will literally it's like a vacuum cleaner with food yeah i mean I anything if, if there's a crumb on the floor like forget about it yeah and he's after it and so i'm on operation slim sharky is what i call it right now <laughs> so we're taking him out for walks trying to get him you know slim down a little bit yeah you know so you don't have to worry about anything but yeah it's fun taking him for walks and just you know just being out just going for like a 20 30 minute walk a day it's, it's so refreshing. Kind of yeah. gets you away from technology. Like once yeah. I do that snap of the dogs, I'm like, I'm done. I'll put the phone down, you know, and just try Don't to check enjoy your Facebook and your text messages. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Go away from technology for a little bit. And it's hard because we're so tied to that. I Being, know. you know, with our brands on social media, that's kind of what we do. Like we have to show people you know we're we're on that that's part of our job in a way yeah so it, it's finding that balance of like i need to just you know enjoy the moment rather than worrying about sharing it with others sometimes so it's, it's a good balance a healthy balance you have to find yeah i totally hear you and i do understand the uh vacuum that <laughs> the uh beagles are because as you know i have a beagle as well charlotte <laughs> is sleeping right next to us and um she will eat anything and everything and she'll wait for us to leave the room so that she can you know lick the counter or whatever she can oh, yeah. get to <laughs> oh yeah she, my our, our beagle will lick the bowl once the husky's done oh my god so once roski's done with their food and yeah. walks away he'll go to her bowl <laughs> and re-lick it i'm like what do you think you're trying to find yeah. like there is no more food in there <laughs> right and he'll just sit there like looking at me and licking the bowl and i'm like go for it man i <laughs> had it you know <laughs> beagles love to eat <laughs> <laughs> totally so um what has changed since you've gotten your YouTube channel, you've gotten your website up? Well, what kind of feedback are you getting? Like people are talking to you. It's just it's just been all positive. You know, it's just people are approaching me. It's funny, like people are they won't do it maybe on YouTube or on Facebook, but I'll get messages and people asking me questions like, how did you do this? Or what did you do this? Or why did you do that? 
And that's where it, it just gets so exciting. Yeah, it's really validating that you're oh, helping people and they yeah. want to know more. Right? Yeah, and it's great when you get those questions. You know, it's like, how do I, you know, how do you do this? Or what if I want to do this? Or I can't have that. Can I substitute this? And that's what I always say. Like, my recipes, are like, and all recipes are guides. Like, and I don't really feel like you have to follow a recipe the way it's written. And I say mm-hmm. that almost all my recipes that I have on my website. I'm like, fool around with it. Substitute. If you don't like the way this tastes, add more of the other thing. Yeah. You know, everybody has a different, you know, taste buds or what they enjoy. But as long as you're using whole plant-based foods with names you can pronounce, then you're, you're not going to go wrong. Absolutely. And so what are some of your most popular videos? Like what gets the most hits or, or questions? Well, you know, the, the smoothie week that I, that I launched a little while ago, yeah. that still gets, gets a lot of views. That's awesome. Um, so it was back to school. It smoothies. was a back to school smoothie week. So I did one smoothie every day, Monday through Friday. Nice. And I had fun with the names. Like I made like a chocolate knockout smoothie. Yes. <laughs> and then I made like a kryptonite green smoothie where I had like a Superman shirt on. Mm-hmm. Like I just had, totally had fun with them. And I think that was the best part is you're having fun with the video But at the same time, you're educating and you're making something healthy. What a great creative outlet because it's like this is what you want to do to help people and it's what you enjoy doing. (laughs) It's a win-win. Come on. (laughs) Why isn't everyone doing this? (laughs) Exactly. If you're listening, do it. Do it today. (laughs) Well, okay. What about if people are not comfortable in front of the camera? What are some other things that they can do? Like they could blog or. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could blog to start a website. You know, you could start a website for free. Yeah, it's for free. Not, it's not hard. Just blogger. go on blogger.com. WordPress. Um, you know, start Instagramming. Just mm-hmm. post pictures. You know, if you don't want to post pictures of yourself, post pictures of... It doesn't even have to be food related. Maybe oh, you travel. love... Maybe you love Smurfs. <laughs> like, literally, like, post a picture of a Smurf every day. You know? You're you- going to get Smurf followers. <laughs> we guarantee you. Whatever your niche is, there's someone else that is obsessed with whatever you're obsessed with. You'd be surprised. Papa Smurf may start following you soon. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just go there and, and just do it. You know, and post it, you know, focus on your strengths. That's some of the stuff I mentioned Gary Vee earlier. And, yeah. And I love watching his videos. And it's funny because that's where I got the Smurf thing. He was like, if you love Smurfs, Smurf it up. You know, like, <laughs> it's great. And that's what he said, like, focus on your strengths. Like, and that's Gary you, Vaynerchuk. Yeah. So f- focus on your strengths. What do you love to do? Because there's things like some people like focus on like, like, I don't want to do videos and I'm not that good. So it's like they so they focus so much on what they can't do mm-hmm. and trying to do that, that they're not even focusing on the, what they do well. Yeah. And if you're a great writer, like write like crazy. Post a new blog every day on your website. Connect it to your social media. Let people know you're there. And you're going to be amazed how many hits you're going to start seeing on that website. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people will find you. And like, what about, there? there's some people out there that are like maybe a highly paid marketer or writer for a company. And what can they do to kind of move into because i know like you how can you have a full-time job and still do this at the same time use your skills from your job to create this business exactly and when it's a passion it's something that you want to do so when you get home from work you know just spend an hour or two doing it if you have it or do it all the weekend yeah you know there's there's ways to get if you want to do it you'll do it and if it's something you're doing anyway and you love to write I mean, maybe, maybe you maybe like in that example said, maybe you go to work every day and you write about something that you really don't care about, but it's your job and that's what you're going to do. Right. But then imagine going home and being able to write about something you love. Yeah. You what know, a great it, feeling. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> and look forward to getting home and not going, oh, now it's just I eat dinner and go to bed and I have to get up for work and do something I'm not passionate about the next day. Then you have something you're working on. And I don't know if it was like this for you, but in my experience, it's like I'm an idea person. So I have ideas, ideas, ideas. I can't sleep because of all my ideas. <laughs> and so what I was doing was a little bit of everything. I'm like, OK, I'm going to work on A idea, B idea and C idea all at once. And nothing was getting accomplished. And I felt frustrated. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I started doing one thing really well that I started to 
get excited and I started to, you know, see the results of that and get the feedback and things like that. So if you have a million ideas, if you're like me, <laughs> pick one, do one thing really well, and then you can pick number two, right? So if you're like, I want to take a painting class and I want to take a writing class I, and I want to go learn guitar, just go learn guitar. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you'll be surprised. It's like how once you're, once you start that and once you start getting that momentum i remember when i first started it i was like trying to do the website and everything and all of a sudden i look up it's like two in the morning yeah it's like three in the morning i'm like whoa and you don't stop like it was 8 p.m a few hours like a minute ago yeah and you don't realize because it's just something that you love doing like the time just like goes by like so quick absolutely Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Food Heals Podcast, where you'll find the tools to become a hotter, healthier, happier you. We'll be right back with Allison Melody and Susie Hardy. Food Heals Nation, if you listen to this podcast often, you know that I'm always on the lookout for natural, organic, vegan, and cruelty-free products that actually work. About two years ago, I discovered 100% Pure Cosmetics. 100% Pure's mission is to create the healthiest cosmetics made with the highest quality ingredients. Just as birth control patches and nicotine patches deliver the medication topically, whatever we apply on our skin gets absorbed into our bloodstream. This is why all 100% Pure formulas are free from harmful toxins that are commonly in other cosmetics. And I love that they practice what they preach. Their corporate offices are run by 100% solar energy, their company is 100% electric, and their pure biodegradable formulas are packaged with post-consumer recycled material and printed with biodegradable, non-toxic vegetable ink. And they love animals. They are completely cruelty-free and charitable towards animal welfare. There are so many amazing products to choose from at 100% Pure, makeup, skincare, hair care, and even baby products. But my personal favorite is the Coffee Bean Eye Cream. It smells delicious, it's anti-inflammatory, and it improves the appearance of puffy under eyes and brightens dark circles. It's made with natural ingredients like potent anti-aging vitamins, antioxidants, and nourishing rosehip oil to make the eye area appear more awake and more youthful. That is why I scored an amazing discount exclusive for you, Food Heals Nation. From now until November 25th, 2015, you can receive 25% off any products from 100percentpure.com plus free shipping using the coupon code FOODHEALS. You're listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. So let me ask you a question, Allison. Since I'm mm-hmm. kind of co-hosting this thing, I guess. Yeah, you are my co-host. I'm like, you know. Co-host guest. Get in the... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I can get used to that. All right. Yeah, come so, back anytime. <laughs> so what were your biggest challenges, would you say, when you started your brand and and building this this empire that you have going on now, Allison. <laughs> I wouldn't call it empire, but thank you. <laughs> um, I think at the beginning, it was the imposter syndrome. So what is that? That's basically when you say, "What am I? who am I to be doing this, mm-hmm. right? And so I felt so passionately about what I was doing. And, you know, in the beginning, it was uh, my brand, Holistic Voice, and posting stories of people who had healed themselves naturally. Um, which then became a film, Food Heals. And it's all about, you know, what you put into your body matters. And I still feel obviously so strongly about that. That's why I'm doing the podcast. But at the beginning, and even to this day, there are days when I go, who am I to be doing this? Why am I doing this? I want to stay small. I'm very scared to expand, only some days. And then it's the days when you get, you wake up in the morning and you have five emails saying, thank you, you have helped me. You know, we're getting reviews on the podcast where people thank us. We get emails into our inbox where people say, this video helped my daughter do this. Like, it's so validating and it reminds me, like, I have to share my knowledge with the world because my knowledge is of value to someone else. And if I don't, what am I doing? I'm working for the man for the rest of my life to make someone else's dreams come true. (laughs) No, I'm going to work to make my dreams come true and to help people because that's all I want to do. I had an awakening and now I want everyone else to have an awakening for themselves. Like what works for them? But like get out of this misery, whether it's because you, whether you have to change your diet, whether you have to change your job, whether you have to get out of a toxic relationship, it doesn't matter. Whatever Mm -hmm. it is, you can do it. I've done it all. (laughs) I've gotten out of the toxic relationship. You know, I've been through tragedy. I've been through a lot in my life and I've gotten through it 
and I could have gone to the dark side and I didn't, you know, and I changed my food and I changed my lifestyle and I changed the people I was surrounding myself with because, you know, you are the epitome of the top five people you spend the most time with. So are you going to spend it with toxic people who bring you down, don't believe in you, don't bring you joy? Or are you going to spend it with people who uplift you? You know, and I choose to spend my time with people that uplift me, people like yourself <laughs> <laughs> who are doing great things with the world. And, you know, so you asked me what the biggest challenge was. I think I still work on that. So I want to share all my knowledge and I want to share the stories of others because I believe so passionately about this. That's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I hope I answered your question. Oh, no, yeah, you did. You did. You did. <laughs> what was your biggest challenge? I would say my biggest challenge, and it's something that, I still get trapped into sometimes to this day is wanting to be perfect. Oh, and I yeah. think you, you know, especially when you're doing a YouTube video, it's like, Oh, I didn't say that right. Or that that's not right. Or that Instagram photo isn't like perfect enough. I need yep. to retake it like 20 million times. Yep. And you get caught up in that. Um, and it's a dangerous trap because it can be, it doesn't create, it's not your, it's not authentic anymore. You know, sometimes you do things so many times, it's staged. I really want to create an authentic product that I'm sharing. And so I, I'm really trying hard to just make it real, make it authentic, and not worrying about being perfect all the time. I love that. It's so true because that's a tendency that carries over into so many other facets of our life as well. Yeah. Right? And so letting go of the need to be perfect, whatever that means to you, mm-hmm. and being and saying, I am perfect. Like, I am whatever I'm I think I'm you need doing. to sing that again. I think like I am. Perfect. There you go. There you go. Get Susie in here. We're in trouble. I won't be joining you on the singing the tour. Just, so you know, it's not my game. We'll get Jason back. I made him sing on the last episode. I made him play a singing game. Food Hills Nation is a judgment-free, judgment-free zone. Yeah, I mean, the perfectionism is something that once you let go of, it's freedom, right? Yeah. It's freedom to be your authentic self. And no one wants to see your fake perfect life. They want to see your authentic exactly. life. Exactly. Because that's what people can relate to, you know? Yeah. And I know that you're, I'm sorry, but your photos on Instagram are perfect, by the way. <laughs> They're stunning. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about, okay? <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. But, you know, it, and it kind of goes along with what you were talking about earlier, just surrounding yourself with positive people. And I think, you know, recently I've surrounded myself with people that really, truly believe in what I'm doing. And these are people that I look up to and that I view as successful, you know, and they see all these positive things and what I'm doing. You know, it just gives you that energy to go out and do more. Absolutely. You feed off of. Oh, it's, it's addicting. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you know, this is this is great. You know, and it's it's I don't know. It's like you don't it's like a drug, but a good drug. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a healthy drug that you just you just want more of and you just want to keep building more and building more. And then before you know it, all of a sudden, like people are attracted to that. Yeah. You know, it's and people are listening to what you're saying. Yeah. And it's so powerful these days. The fact that we have YouTube and social media that anyone can position themselves as an expert in what they believe in in their field, because yeah. whoever you are, whatever you love, whatever you believe in, there are other people that are at the same place you are Mm -hmm. or they're not quite there yet and they need to hear your message so sharing your experiences with the world taking your photos writing your blogs doing your videos whatever it is is going to help someone else and even if it's comedy right (laughs) it doesn't have to be oh i i want to save the world or i want to make everyone vegan like vince and i do but uh (laughs) just kidding um but like let's say like you're really funny well that comedy can help someone get out of their dark day or just like you know chill out at work and take a break and watch your comedy that is uplifting to the world so whatever you're doing you share it with the world that is the purpose i think of life like share your gifts with the world and if you don't know what those are go discover them exactly yeah i mean you don't even know what that may be until you start doing it yeah and you might try a bunch of different things and and see what works for you and what doesn't exactly you know you know you never know what's going to be your strength until you start yeah find out what you're good at absolutely and don't 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 think you're an imposter. You're not. You can't be an imposter of yourself, of your true self. An imposter of yourself. I'm just trying to think, like, how would how would that go? How well, that's would... what we tell ourselves in, in many cases. Mm, interesting. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough. Who are we to do this? You know, maybe you've never experienced events. Maybe you don't have it. 
No, I do. I do. I do. I, do. <laughs> I just never put the word to it. That's pretty interesting. I'll have to like catch myself. Be like, damn, this is what the imposter thing Allison was talking about. Yeah. Well, in that case, if you do catch yourself thinking those negative thoughts, it's really easy to turn around. You just have to stop the thought. You know, let it let it be. Listen to it. Say, okay, I was feeling that way a minute ago, but now I'm not. Now I'm feeling empowered. I am. All you have to say is to yourself, I am, and then complete the sentence. I am a rock star chef on the YouTube, you know, whatever it is. I don't know. I am an amazing singer. I am an incredible cook. Whatever it is that you are or you strive to be, tell yourself that because your cells are listening to the thoughts you think and the words that you say. Yeah, um, that, it's not woohoo BS. Yeah. Well, I, could, I mean, I could relate when I first started, you know, creating the brand. I had, um, you know, I had a little bit of an episode with Michael Light. And it's something that mm. I hadn't experienced probably in two to three years. And I remember, you know, going through that in the morning mm -hmm. and sitting on the uh, sitting on a chair in the afternoon and questioning what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Like, OK, I created this brand. And I'm still I'm still having I'm having a symptom. I'm having experiences. You know, is this authentic? Is this real? Can I keep doing this? Yeah. And you doubt yourself. Yeah. Like. It was that was probably the biggest doubt, you know, bigger than trying to be perfect or, mm -hmm. you know, being in front of a camera is that experience alone. When I sat there saying, you know, do I really want to keep doing this? And I remember it, it was it was I was sitting there for a long time, and I remember just thinking to myself, and I can't remember where I heard this from, but I remembered somebody saying to me that it's easy to do it when everything's working in your favor, when everything's going well. Mm -hmm. But if you can do it when it's not going well, mm -hmm. that is, that's that hurdle you have to overcome. Yeah. Cause anybody could go on and be like, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, but as this guy's going, I don't feel so good. Right. You know, and be able to share that experience and be real. And I think sometimes, you know, even as, as vegans and people that want to are the healthy mindset, you never want to use the term I'm sick. Right. Because you feel like that is we're not we're, we're, we're not supposed to get sick. Right. We eat so right. healthy. Look at all these antioxidants. Look at all these vitamins. Right. But reality is you, you, you get sick. Of course. Sometimes it's emotional. You know, there's so many different causes that could cause it. But everyone is going to go through something. No one is immune. But you get you. You're almost afraid to share that yeah. because you feel like there's this image you have to portray. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm vegan. I can't be sick. Mm hmm. You know, look at all these fruits and veggies I eat all the time. Yeah. And I think being able to be real and, and honest with yourself and and be able to overcome those feelings and those situations, I think that's what really, really motivates me. And that was like, that was the biggest hurdle yeah. that I had to overcome. I totally hear you. Do you think that your, um, act, your colitis acting up again was a result of some emotional issues that you know I, I i'm not sure what it was it was and it wasn't a huge symptom but it was something that made me like sit back and be like wow i haven't experienced it and it's a reminder that it's there mm -hmm. um and sometimes you just have to deal with it like maybe it, i mean that's why i always caution using the word healing because you know it's i i truly believe food can heal the body and i've used food to heal my body but there is a condition there that maybe I didn't have the right food. Maybe I didn't eat the right way. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Maybe there was a lot of stress going on. Maybe there was, you know, all these environmental factors yeah. could play into it that, you know, gave me a few symptoms. And I was just like, whoa, you know, what's going on? And it, it was just a reminder yeah. that you have to still overcome this. And it's, it's, it never stops. And yeah. you, you, it, it's there and you just have to keep you know, push forward. So what did you do when you were feeling those symptoms? Did you do extra steps to help it? Uh, I, I just really went back to a, like a lot of, of greens, a lot of green juice mm -hmm. going back to a, going back to like the basics, Yeah. you know, and you know, sometimes when you go out to eat, you, you know, you, you take a gamble sometimes. So maybe it was something I ate the night before. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I went out to eat, but 
sometimes maybe there's something in there that it's not food poisoning, but it's something that triggers something yeah. after it got, you know, you don't know what it is. Right. You know, and it's something that, uh, you know, you just have to deal with sometimes. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I can't pinpoint exactly what it was, but I, I knew how to heal it. I yeah. knew how to make it go away. That's amazing. I mean, that's what this is all about. If something is ailing you, you know what steps to take to really help it go away or to not just cover up the symptoms, right? Yeah. So it's like, if you have a symptom, if you have a headache, if your colitis is acting up, there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't know the exact cause, instead of treating the symptom with pill and covering it up and not letting it go away, you can take steps to heal it. It sounds like that's what you do. Yeah. You You know, I I go to just you know, kind of like my staple diet. Very yeah. bland, a lot of green juices, a lot of greens, a lot of smoothies. Yeah. No, I don't want to say it's like a detox, but I just kind of let my body do its thing. Yeah, it's kind of like fasting from other um, foods and letting your body heal itself with those really nutrient-dense things. And your body knows what to do. Yeah. You know, when you're giving it the right food, it's like, okay, I got it. I and got it, this. And it, it, honestly, it, it didn't last more than a day or two. Like, mm-hmm. it was, it, and it was really mild. Like, it wasn't something that was major. And I probably made it out to be more than it was mm-hmm. just because the one of the biggest obstacles that I found in these conditions is not the physical aspect. It's the mental aspect that you have to overcome. Absolutely. And I think that was like that was one of the hardest things to deal with because now that mental aspect of it was right in front of my face again. And yeah. that's the hardest hurdle. Is is getting over the why me? Oh my, ga ba ba ba. You know that that that's you know those thoughts that go through your head. Yeah. You know, and then when I talk to people that were, you know, when they, you know, sometimes friends of a friend or somebody I know gets diagnosed, they call me mm-hmm. or they'll text me and they'll be like, hey, you know, my my son was just diagnosed with this or my friend was just diagnosed yep. with this and what did you do and how did it, and the first thing they, it's always the pity party. The pity mm-hmm. party is one of the first things that come. The victim mentality. Why yeah. me? Uh-huh. I mean, and I had it. I of think, course. I think that's a normal, you know, Reaction. part of the process. Sure. Um, but it's then I always turn around and I say, you're going to be stronger because of this. You're going to have a better appreciation for things after they were taken away from you. Mm-hmm. And you're actually going to be a better person for having this. And I think no matter if it's an autoimmune condition that you have or, or anything in life that's a challenge that you feel sorry for yourself once you look at it as a positive and a way that you overcame it and use that to propel you in the rest of your life i think you're setting yourself up for success whatever that may be absolutely i think you know it's opportunity it's it's hard to see it that way at first like you said have your pity party like have that moment, let it pass, cry it out, get upset, do what you need to do because those are real emotions that need to be dealt with. Don't suppress that. But then say, how can I see this as a gift and an opportunity to change? And what steps am I going to cha- take to change this? You exactly. Know? And that's what this is all about. And things are going to change in your life. And I guarantee you that these things you can eventually look back at and say, that was a gift because it brought me to where I am now. Yep. And trust me, I've been through some of the worst you know, some of the worst. And I never would have pictured myself sitting here today saying that very statement. <laughs> I have had the pity party for a long time. <laughs> I can't imagine. I, I never thought I'd be on a podcast talking about this kind of stuff. So it's, you know, you never know where you're going to end up and who you're going to be talking to. Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> we don't even know who's listening to this. Yeah. You know, maybe there's somebody on the end going, I, I know what they're talking about. I hope so. And I'm going to do it right now. I I hope that they do, whether it's, you know, taking the steps to heal your body or taking the steps to change your what you're doing every day and live a more authentic, holistic, happy life. We just encourage you, like, take the steps because, you know, we're sitting here not perfect at all, but we are perfect. (laughs) We're not. Oh, man. You just bursted my bubble there, Allison. You need to work on your perfection issues. Remember. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) but yeah we are just examples of people who have really taken you know 
unfortunate things in our lives that could be looked at as tragic or, you know, whatever and transform them. You can transform your life. You can heal your life. You can change any, even if you're not dealing with a serious disease or you haven't like lost, you know, a loved one or anything like that. You're not dealing with a tragedy. You're just like, hey, my life is like stale right now. I need to have a little more fun. You need to spice it up a little spice bit. Spice it up. Like go have some fun. Go take that class, you know, whatever it is. Go to that karaoke meetup, okay? You know I'm talking about myself right now. But uh, go do something that has heart and meaning to you. And then maybe you'll end up taking it and making it into a more of a brand like Vince and I have. Or maybe it's just going to be your pastime and you're going to do it three times a week and you're going to be so much happier in all the other things that you're doing. Right. Exactly. And you don't you don't even have to make it an official brand, but you're doing something right. you love and it's, it's bringing out so much positive energy in your life. Yeah. Where can everyone find you online? Thank you very much. I really enjoyed being here. You could find me at healthyveganguy.com. And you can find me on all social media, including YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. It's all under the tagline Healthy Vegan Guy. What about Periscope? And Periscope. Yeah. I know. I need to do a Periscope. We should yeah. do a Periscope. Okay. We'll do one after the show. Yes. We're going to go get some dinner and do a Periscope. Gracias, Madre. is calling my name. It's singing your name, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, come eat me now. Yes, I'm on my way. <laughs> Get into my belly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed that chat with Vince. Next up, I want to play you two audio recordings to further inspire you, and then I will tell you about my top three takeaways from the Hay House Writers Conference. First up, I'm going to play the audio from one of Vince's videos from his back to school smoothie week that he mentioned earlier. This is a great series with delicious, healthy, easy to make recipes. So I definitely encourage you to check them all out on YouTube. But I wanted you to hear Vince in action and learn more about what he does. So this is also for all of you out there who love listening to the podcast because of the recipes, as I have heard that you do. So this recipe is for his tropical crush smoothie. Bet you never had this ingredient in a tropical smoothie. This is Vince Leah, the Healthy Vegan Guy, and we're about to make one of my favorite smoothies, the Tropical Crush. If you want to feel like you're on a desert island with all this amazing fruit around you, you're going to want to stay tuned and see what we put in this thing because there's a special ingredient that takes it over the top. So let's go ahead and start blending. First, we're going to start with a half a cup of fresh coconut water, has tons of electrolytes and great for hydration. We have two fresh citrus oranges, obviously high in vitamin C, but oranges also contain something called pectin, which helps lower cholesterol levels. One cup of fresh papaya. Now papaya contains a digestive enzyme that helps break down protein so your body can absorb it more easily. One cup of frozen mangoes, one cup a frozen pineapple, high in vitamin C, and also contains healthy digestive enzymes. And our final secret ingredient is one tablespoon of freshly chopped ginger. Ginger is high in antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties and really brings out that tropical flavor in this smoothie that takes it to another level. Now blend for about 30 seconds or until smooth. Time to go to our tropical island. Mm. This tastes so good with all these tropical fruits and that ginger. Reminds me of being on a tropical island. Where's my hammock? I need to go relax by the beach for a little bit now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what is the one tropical island you want to go to right now. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and join my newsletter at healthyveganguy.com to have all these back to school smoothie recipes delivered straight to your inbox. Okay, I want to be on vacation right now drinking a tropical crush. That sounds so good. I'm going to have to make it tomorrow. <laughs> So for the rest of the series, you can just go to youtube.com slash healthy vegan guy and click on the smoothie week playlist. Next up, I'm going to talk about my experience with the Hay House Writers Workshop that I just got back from in New York, where I was completely inspired by Gabrielle Bernstein. 
and I was already a fan of hers and had read two of her books, but seeing her speak was an incredibly motivating experience. Gabrielle has been named the Next Generation Thought Leader by Oprah. She appears regularly as an expert on the Dr. Oz show and has been named a new role model by the New York Times. She is the New York Times bestselling author of Miracles Now and May Cause Miracles. Her two additional bestsellers include Add More Ing to Your Life and Spirit Junkie. Gabrielle is also the founder of HerFuture.com, which is a social networking site for women to inspire, empower, and connect. I don't have the audio from the workshop, but I found a video online that really goes into what Vince and I were talking about today. It's called Three Steps to Making Your Passions Your Paycheck, and she's got some really great tips and advice. So I'm going to play that for you now, and then I will tell you all about the conference. What if I told you you could make your passions your paycheck? Here's how. Hi, I'm Gabby Bernstein. I'm a motivational speaker and a self-help book author. And I'm here to be your digital coach. I'm here to give you guidance on relationships, career, or really anything that you want to ask me. Today, I am a motivational speaker, a self-help book author, a video goddess. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I love what I do. I absolutely am so moved to my core by what it is that I do. And there was a period in my life in my early 20s when I was running a PR business doing quite the opposite of what it is that I do today. I was representing nightclubs as a publicist here in New York City and I felt like something was massively missing. I felt like this other stuff, this other area of my life that I was so passionate about, public speaking, self-help, personal growth, I was denying. And so I felt like I needed to learn and take the necessary steps to make that passion my life mission and my career. So if you're ready to make your passions your paycheck, here are my three steps. The first step is to identify your effortless actions. What are the things that you do by choice? Maybe you love being of service and on the weekends you're going and you're working in a soup kitchen. Or maybe you love throwing parties and you're just awesome at throwing parties. You are the girl that throws the best parties in town and this is your favorite thing on the planet to do. Maybe you love designing and styling your best friends and you're just so into fashion that you just are mind blowing at your styling skills. And if you are, I would love for you to call me. And so whatever it is that you do by choice, those effortless actions, those effortless actions, if you practice them enough, can often become your career. This was the case for me. Okay, the next step might bug you out a little bit, but bear with me. This step is crucial. Be willing to do what you love for free for a period of time. And I wanna emphasize this last part of the sentence, for a period of time because you don't want to get stuck in the I do it for free forever because that's not going to fly that's not a career you want to be paid for your good work but there is a period of time where it's crucial to really just give and be of service and get your chops and get good at what you do when I was running my PR business, I was speaking publicly at the Learning Annex and at women's organizations and at other empowering women's retreats and entrepreneurial ventures. And I would show up and I would tell my story. And I would talk about how I was running a business at 21 and I would talk about what I was doing to transform my life. And I did this for five years for free. And it didn't actually feel like I was doing anything for free because I got so much joy out of it. I was creating such benefit in my life because it was so fun for me. But the experience of those five years of public speaking for free prepared me for the time when I was ready to start to charge for my trade. I had gotten all the kinks out. I had really felt confident in this new skill. And I felt like I really, I earned my way. I really paved my path. And five years later, I started to sell tickets to my live events. And then when people would ask me to speak, I'd say, my fee is this. And it was very natural for me to begin to ask for money because I'd put my time in and I really nurtured my craft and my art. And, and today, it is my primary profession. The time where you are working for free is crucial because it gives you an opportunity to hone your craft. So if you're a private chef and you're cooking meals for family members, you're cooking for your friends, you can perfect your meals. 
or if you're a writer and you're blogging for free for five years, that's amazing because you're getting your name out there and you're circulating in the search engine and you're just becoming this awesome person out in the ether that people will start to pick up your writing. And so don't be afraid to work for free, but I'm going to overly emphasize this for a period of time. The last step. Energy flows where your intention goes. And this is a beautiful step because wherever we focus our energy, we send fuel to, we send fire, we send inspiration and excitement. And we cultivate this new birthing, really. We bring something into the world. And so whatever you're focusing on, you're creating. So if you're out there doing your work for free for a while, you're focusing on it. If you're staying up late nights and weekends, practicing your craft and your work, you're focusing on it. So find that time in your life where you can bring energy to that work that you are so inspired by and so passionate about. And in a short period of time, that passion will soon become your paycheck. So infusing that passion with your energy will bring forth all that you need to make it your career. So let's do a little wrap up here. This is how you can make your passions your paycheck. Focus on your effortless actions and identify what it is that you love and that is where you wanna focus. That's where you wanna bring your energy. Remember that energy flows where your intention goes. And so bring that energy, that attention, that focus to those effortless actions. Be willing to do them for free for a period of time and and expect many miracles to occur in your career. Expect lots of shifts and, and trust and know that if you're having a great time doing it, you will be guided to make it your career path. So let's get real for a second. I I know that it can be scary to contemplate making a career shift, particularly if you're far along on one path, or you feel like, how could I possibly do this? There's a million other people doing it. I I really wanna come back to basics and emphasize that if there's something in your life that brings you joy, then it is your responsibility to bring more energy to it and to give yourself a chance to try to create it as a powerful, passionate profession. Because when you're in a place of joy, you're bringing so much more to the world. And and that's really your primary career, is to to be a happy person and bring love to the world. So, So focus on that energy, focus on that inspiration. And trust that when you're in that place of inspiration, you're doing what is the greatest gift and the greatest service to the world and everyone around you. And in that energy, you're gonna create more of what you want. So I wanna hear from you. Tell me what happens. I wanna hear how you make your passions your paycheck. If you have stumbling blocks along the way, tell me what's up. I'm here. Dear Gabby, hashtag Dear Gabby, come at me. At Gabby Bernstein, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I will be at Glamour.com. I'm all over the internet. Find me. And, and, and just let me know how it's going. Let me know how I can help you because this is a tough one. This one can be a little bit of a struggle. It can be scary. It can be difficult. And I want to help. So come at me, people. Hashtag Dear Gabby. Let me know what's going on. All right. So if you want more from Gabby, as she calls herself, you can find her online. Just Google Gabrielle Bernstein and she is everywhere. So the Writers Conference was really incredible. Some of the best speakers were Gabrielle Bernstein, obviously, like I've been talking about, as well as Nick Ortner and Tracy Reed. Um, All very, very inspiring. Uh, The whole thing was great. I went with a good friend of mine and, you know, it was, I'm so glad I went. I'm so glad I went. If you have the opportunity to do anything Hay House related and you're interested in this food, spirituality, doing what you love, world, Hay House is the place to be. Check them out. You can Google them as well. Find out all the summits and events that they do. So here are my top three takeaways from the conference. Nick Ortner is author of The Tapping Solution, which is this really interesting way of letting go and getting rid of past emotional hurt and emotional scars. And so I'm not an expert on The Tapping Solution. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but I definitely encourage you if you're interested in an alternative method to therapy or pills, then check out The Tapping Solution. It's very powerful. We did a few in class. I've done it before, and it it really does help with getting rid of emotional blocks and getting rid of those past misbeliefs or untrue statements that we're telling ourselves are true. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. This happened to me. Therefore, the world is bad. All these things that we tell ourselves that are absolutely not true. It's all about getting rid of that crap so that the good can come in, so that the truth can come in, so that peace can come in, right? So one of the quotes he said, which I love, is if you want to clean the house, you have to see the dirt. So what does that mean? 
if you want to make a change in your life, if you want to move forward on something, you got to clean out the crap first. So all the past beliefs that you're holding on to that may be holding you back, just like I just said, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Who am I to be doing this? You got to look at it, recognize, figure out where that comes from. Is it because as a child you were told you can't do that? Maybe you're a woman and you were told women belong in the kitchen, right? Something like that. Whatever the misbeliefs are that you're holding on to, you got to let that go. You got to see it. You got to think about where that came from. You got to forgive yourself for believing it. You got to forgive that person that told you that and move on. That is when you have your true power and your true strength, right? So if you want to clean the house, you've got to see the dirt. So you can't push it down, your pain, your anger, your misbeliefs, your judgments. You've got to let it up to the surface. See it. Acknowledge it. Be it. Experience it. Cry it out. Get mad. And then let it go. Because when you experience it, you can then experience freedom. My second takeaway is from Gabrielle Bernstein. And she said, I am an untethered force of light. So what does that mean? I am light. Don't be in the darkness. Recognize the light that is within you. It's not above you. It's not far away. It's not hard to reach. You are the light. And be the light for others. Light attracts light. So if I'm the light, then I'm going to attract other people who are also the light. If I'm the negative, if I'm the angry, if I'm the frustrated, if I'm the I hate life, I'm going to attract more of that into my life, more negative people, more negative energy. And that's not something that I want to be doing and neither do you. We want to recognize the light within ourselves and let it shine so brightly. Let your light shine. Be open. Let people in. Let your truth be shown to the world. Your truth is your gift. Your stories are your gift. Your lightness is your gift. So be the light. I am an untethered force of light. I absolutely love that statement. I think it's beautiful. My third takeaway is also from Gabrielle Bernstein. She said whenever she doesn't know what her next step is, whenever she's feeling down, depressed, not sure what to do, it's time to meditate and really ask yourself, ask God if you believe in God, whatever your beliefs are. This is really about asking your inner guidance. How can I serve? How can I be of service to the world? And if you're quiet in your meditation or before you're trying to go to bed or maybe early in the morning is good for you when you're able to be quiet and not check that Facebook and not check that text message and not check that email, right? This is when you're in your quiet time. And if you don't have any quiet time, that's another thing. You got to get your quiet time. You got to be able to have that time to reflect and do your meditation. How can I serve? When you ask that question, be still and be quiet and the answer will come to you. If it doesn't come to you in that exact moment, just know that it's going to come to you. Maybe later in the day, maybe later in the week. Maybe the answer is going to come in the form of a person. Maybe the answer is going to come in the form of a book falling off the shelf. Maybe you're going to hear your answer because you're really connected. It doesn't matter, but that answer is going to come. What is your next step? How can I serve? How can I be of service to others? How can I help someone else? Because whoever you are, whatever you're going through, your experience can help another person. Don't forget it. Don't discard it. Be it. Understand that. How can I serve? How can I be of service? Such a powerful statement. So that wraps up today's episode of the Food Heals podcast. And we have a tweetable, of course. Today's tweetable comes from Vince. You never know what's going to be your strength until you start. Great advice, Vince. If you like that, Tweet it to Vince at Healthy Vegan Guy. Tweet it to us at Food Heals Nation and use the hashtag Food Heals Podcast in your post. And I want to end on the quote that you just heard from Gabrielle that really sums up the theme of today's show. And it was in the video audio recording that I played for you. If there is something in your life that brings you joy, it is your responsibility to bring more energy to it and to give yourself a chance to try to create it as a powerful, passionate profession. When you are in a place of joy, you are bringing so much more to the world and that's really your primary career is to be a happy person and bring more love to the world. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. 
These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat in this dress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. 